Well, good afternoon, everyone. How you guys all feeling? I'm just uplifted right here with Sean Robinson. Sean is just talking about how many different challenges he had in life and what he overcame. But you see, the positive mentality. He's going to shine his positive mentality and how he's not letting it bother him. He's not letting it bother him at all. So, Sean, Sean, how you doing? How you doing? Good. How are you? I appreciate you having me here and excited to get into it. Not uh, me. Hello. <laughs> I just want to hear what you said. Want to give everybody like what all the challenges that you've overcome. What can you motivate us on? Well, I think to start, I I didn't I didn't realize that I even had a problem, to be honest. And and I think that's where it where it's it becomes common for for you know a lot of people. Having said that, I, I started to learn my relationship with with drinking alcohol. Um and and the habits and routines that I had with that, um, you know, buying too much, drinking too much, just uh, feeling like I had to have it in certain moments or at certain events or times of the day, days of the week, whatever it was. It was just, you know, my relationship with it that got to that point. And, you know, I've always had a problem with weight and you were human. It goes up and down. But I got to a point where I was 320 pounds. I had reached what I call like a rock bottom moment that I'd had enough with what that meant to me and my abilities and my energy levels. And with, you know, being in a, with three young kids, it just wasn't, I wasn't proud of not having that energy and, and that presence to, to want to play with them and do those things. And, you know, I related it to drinking and I related it to old eating habits and just a general negativity that I carried because I felt like, all of these things were just going to get better on their own. And that, you know, I was, I was a victim somehow in, in like a, you know, basically I was blaming anything outside of my own control. Like it was someone else's fault. And um, a lot of that I felt came from the background that I had and the, the, you know, the, the, the upbringing that I had and those routines that, that I learned through that environment. And then, you know, work in construction and, and in those places where, you know, a lot of people around me had similar backgrounds and whatever that is. And almost like because I worked in an industry that, you know, you, oh, you were construction. That means you have to drink all the time and have a substance abuse problem and you have to be overweight and smoke and all the things that like come with the stereotype of a certain role. It was like I felt like I had to maintain that somehow and for some reason. So a lot of my my journey is just around realizing that I can show up however I want. I can work on those things and I can be more positive. And it's, it's all in an effort to, you know, just be more intentional. Clearly, clearly. <laughs> I like you say, how we get out of the old routines and because habits are so strong. <laughs> Getting out of the old, clearly. Just keep it all like the energy and the youthfulness on yourself a lot. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I hear you. Because oh, yeah, didn't you bring up something about uh, yeah? You you said to losing the weight and everything. Like, what was the angle that, that helped you on that part? Yeah, so I guess uh, where it relates to drinking is also where it relates to weight. And you know, when I found that three hundred twenty pounds on the scale, um, I had an awful routine with drinking, and it was it was at the end of twenty twenty. COVID made things worse. You know, we and I'm from Eastern Ontario, Canada, and you know, as much as anywhere else, we weren't. We weren't, we weren't allowed to go out for a while, right? And it was just, let's stay home and have drinks and do Zoom party drinking things. And it just made an already toxic environment uh, worse for me as far as my routine goes. So basically, to start January 2021, I needed to do something to just be healthier, to start losing weight, to feel healthier. And it just seemed like my relationship with alcohol was the the closest and best thing to take that break from. So I so I started with dry January, then dry February, 100 days, um, eventually set a goal to be off like for a full year. And while I haven't gone back at all um, to drinking, it's um, I, I, I related that first year and, and created my uh, my book that uh, that I, I wrote from my journals to basically showcase what that year was like to go from that, you know, mentality of uh, as I described to someone that's now not drinking, showing up better, feeling better, doing those things. And, um, you know, it was always in an effort to do that for myself. Uh, in addition to that journey with my book called Going Dry, My Path to Overcoming Habitual Drinking, this right here, uh, um, you know, 
I started to do more healthier things. I started to walk more. I started to diet better. And I eventually got to a point where I lost a hundred pounds. And oh. like, I, it's just been a catalyst for me to challenge who I thought I had to be and who I had to show up as to, you know, start to do things, not drinking and start to do things with a better diet and a, and a better fitness uh, element and, you know, really, really challenge who I thought I had to be. I hear you big time because I'm telling you, America, we have been mm, so brainwashed because they just always want you all over the sugar over here. Because <laughs> I was only doing the juices and everything, but even the naturalist doctor I went to, <laughs> all the sugar that you drinking, I'm like, what? What are you talking about? I didn't think it was a big deal for, um you know, some juices and everything. But now that I say... <laughs> It's just I'm out of the habit of even doing the juice angle, and I'm just doing all of the mm -hmm, regular H2O. We all see my big old water bottle here is a whole gallon. Oh my goodness, you can barely see. <laughs> this <laughs> one here, you can barely see. Oh, there you go. And this is a whole gallon size right there. But that one there, she even finally got me. Okay, stop doing the whole gallon. You just do a half a gallon because your sodium got too, too low. I'm like, oh my goodness. Well, okay. At least I got the great results on that one. And then learning about the coconut water. Coconut water <laughs> is so sweet and it's completely natural. There's no sugar at all. You go over there and see only coconut is the only thing in there. And I'm all like, oh. Hey man, just staying disciplined on those just keeps me more motivated. That, mm -hmm, let me ignore the past desires because, oh, ooh, I don't know. When you think about it, you can think about how much you love that taste. But moving on, moving on. I guess don't think about mine and I just relax and take my steps. Like, what, what, how made it easy for you? Like, what step or what move just keeps you fi on fire for, you know, keeping your old, you know, the discipline on yourself for dropping those moves you know i think it was a kind of a two-part thing and and this wasn't something that i gathered right away because you know for a long time i said my the thing i kept telling myself is i know what i have to do i just have to do it i know what i have to do i just have to do it the problem is that's just what i thought i didn't know what i had to do okay it's it's one thing to diet it's one thing to say i'm just not gonna have sugar but that's not the whole story right because if you just cut that out forever then what happens when you let a little bit of that back in, right? Sugar is one of the most addictive substances. So you start to let that back in. Is it a punishment now? Or like, should you be like, feel depressed about it? Or did you eat that cookie because it was a celebration or was it a piece of birthday cake? And you know what? The, the two-part process was, you know, give myself a bit of a break, but stick to the plan, right? It was, it was, allow myself to to do that and, and not with the drinking element but for dieting and for exercise and for drinking more water it was okay maybe i didn't drink a gallon of water today and and drop my sodium but it was maybe i i, I drank half of that and tomorrow i'm going to try to do the other thing but at least I've, I've given myself that 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 grace to say you know what, if I don't do it all today, I'm further than I was yesterday. And I'm going to start, I'm going to go back to it again tomorrow. I love thinking positive is essential. Not beating yourself up because I live on the free your mind. The rest will follow. That's just my, that's my signature where I just don't think about it. It's like, whatever. I'm dropping yesterday. I'm thinking all the things. I mean... <laughs> Because there you I think you were talking about how the you dropped all that alcohol and everything. I mean, are we hearing some more? You showed the book. Is there some more details like from your personal um, one? Or do you have other people's stories? Like, I mean, what did we hear about that for the alcohol? Because more folks. Yeah, it, it, it's I mean, it started with that journal that I started at the end of 2020 coming from a tough masculine construction volunteer firefighter space where I felt like I couldn't talk about it. I couldn't open up. I had to fix it on my own. And that journal, when I started was really just me beating myself up. It was, it was that I felt people around me didn't want to hear about it anymore. And I needed to outlet somewhere that I wouldn't have to have advice thrown back. I didn't have to have judgment thrown back. It was, it was a place that came from beating myself up and being very negative to Hey, what if I tried this and I'd write about it? Or what if, Hey, I did this thing today, or I bought this like Yeti style mug and I could put whatever I want in it. It's kind of like a, a security blanket, or it's kind of like a tool that I can use. And so I started to write about these things and 
there'd be challenges. It'd come up and it was, it was New Year's Eve and there'd be all those parties. There'd, it would be someone's birthday. It would be because COVID went, started to go away and we were allowed to do things again. And as much as we were doing them anyways, you we didn't have to worry that someone was going to knock on the door. So like I would start to document what I was doing different in these situations so that I was more mindful of it if they came up again or another version of that. So I documented all of that in, in my book and, you know, the underlying that kind of carried through the entire year was a friend of mine was getting married and, you know, he was in my wedding and and I was in his wedding and basically I was expected to show up the way that we used to hang out. So every time we went to a function with the wedding, uh, you know, getting fitted for the suits or bachelor parties or whatever, he kept telling me, you'd better drink at my wedding. You'd better drink at my wedding. And like, I was feeling a lot of anxiety because I didn't know that I was going to take an extended break or not drink anymore. I was just looking to start being more healthy. I was just looking to get away from it enough to get some clarity and to see where it goes. And so I couldn't describe that to someone else because I didn't know how long I was going to do this for at that time. But then to feel like I had to show up a certain way, like that was a lot of pressure. And and I didn't, I'm, I'm, I was usually the biggest supporter of, of people in these moments and wanting to do the shots and the, the salutations and all of the things. And it, it was like, now I'm not that person. And it wasn't that I wasn't that person. It's just, I can't be that person with the substance that they're used to me doing that with. So a lot of these things I have written about in this journal and I've, I've put in this book and really transferred it into a place that has that dark moment in the beginning where I was the most confused and then kind of carries through a lot of these things. And towards the end, you know, not to give it away because I'm excited for people to, to get into it, but like, you know, to really see that transformation from an old mindset to something more growth minded and something more supportive, uh, not only for me, but for those around me. Hey. That makes all the sense. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Because I like what you were saying about that uh, taking a little drink or something at the well wedding and everything or New Year's. Of course, all the big events. Those where you definitely gonna have a little little bit over there for those. Um, of course, I do those, but mm -hmm. <laughs> not like I have anything personally in any daily. Like it's just a uh, you know the big events. We gonna have a little. <laughs> And mines are different because I got to have the mm -hmm, sweetie taste. You got to give me a pina colada or daiquiri. Just hello. Those tastes. I like the <laughs> fruity because I'm a fruit. I love all the fruits, man. Apples are my favorite. But I have to have me some bananas. <laughs> have to have all of the good, good mm -hmm, sweets to go with it. So the pears, everything like that. I would love juicy this more. But bananas are not juicy, but whatever. They still the quick ones that are <laughs> nice and sweet. But those are my personal. But you learned some big ones there. You said you learned up a hundred and a uh, hundred pounds or something dropped. That's humongous. <laughs> so you learned yeah, over... strengthening things. Like what did you suggest from the others for that? Yeah, that was uh that was really interesting because, you know, uh, I've always been, and I think it's, it's common and that's where I started. It's, it's these common things, you know, we're so programmed to want everything right now. You know, if our internet starts to slow down, you know, it's like the end of the world, right? We want everything. We want it now. If Amazon's two days instead of one, it's a problem. So, and a lot of times when we go into these things, if it's, you know, contrary to what we're used to doing, if it's, you know, maybe outside our comfort zone a little bit, you know, we want to lose weight, but we want it yesterday. We want it right now. And the weight that I lost, it was the reason I got started and the reason I decided to take that break from drinking and just to do the diet. But I've tried a lot of diets. I've tried a lot of things and I never felt like they worked, right? It, how many times have we heard that? It's like, oh, that, that diet, whatever, doesn't work. And I think a lot of the times it's because we just don't give it enough time. I never used to give it enough time. It was like, oh, you know, a couple of weeks, I didn't really notice anything. So I don't know, I guess it's no good. And then I I'd put my guard up like that diet sucks. But the reality was, you know, you need like three months of solid anything in order to notice the results. It's not just that diet. It's not just starting to read or drink the, the water. It's, you know, you got to give ourselves a good two, three months of that same thing to notice the results. And the interesting part, as I said, is that I started to think about that. I started to learn about that. And, and I started to do these things for a hundred days at a time. I mentioned that, that earlier, that, that, you know, dry January became February became a hundred days because I'd learned that that lifestyle change that I was trying to make 
has the most success if you do that thing for that many days. So, you know, I would keep track of it on the calendar because it's important to track what you're doing. I would, I would have a circle on the, on the day for every day I wasn't drinking. I'd have a, you know, an X for days without sugar. I'd have check marks for something else and squiggly lines for something else. And if, if I wanted to describe what that mark on the calendar meant to someone, if they were over and asked about it, I could, either be honest and share, or if I was feeling a bit bit vulnerable and a bit upset, I could tell them whatever I wanted, like, oh, they're just whatever. And, and so it was in that, it was in that documenting of the thing I was working on and really just being generous that I would, or really being like consistent that I was knowing it was going to take a couple months to see results. Once I started to see those results at about that, that three month mark, and it was, it was a bit sooner, but for argument's sake, 100 days is, is a good round number. I noted, I noticed the results and it it just kept me going. So the weight loss, it, it became, you know, 20 pounds, 30 pounds. And over a period of a couple of years, because like that was 2020 and we're 2024 in, in, the, in the span of just a couple of years, just doing something I was doing anyways, this weight just flew off. It just, it just started to come away and there was no special diet. There was no costly pills. There was like no surgeries. It was just, it was just drinking more water, paying attention to what I was eating, going for walks and just giving myself a period of time to just keep going with it and let it, let it go away eventually. Hello. I love that one. Cause it's always a personal relate. Everybody's got their own personal body versus everybody else's. So it's not like you going to sit there and mm-hmm, compare yourself to another because it would work very well with this person, but their body is probably completely different than ours. So that's why so I love doing exercise on the DL because hello, you don't even think about it. don't even realize it. But I mean, like you said, the walks on a DL, especially i like that one that's encouraging to hear it all that one mm. so you can just oh the your true story so you got some more details about you and the family because like, yeah i remember you saying something about the family is that in the book as well the journal yeah it is um like my i have three young kids and my my daughter was born just the september before i kind of started to do these things and you know i had two two boys before for her and it, it was I don't know that it was the, the, the fact that she was born, but it was just timing with with me deciding I needed to, to start showing up differently, realizing that with three young kids, I just I, I don't want to be, you know, down the road and, and regret never playing and regret never, you know, seeing them grow and being present and doing things with them. So, you know, it was like, um, you know, just starting to to figure out how I can be more vulnerable and how I can be more present for them. And, and really it's about evolution because the things that, that my parents did, I mean, that stuff, as much as the core value and the core of those things in a you know positive manner, they transfer, they translate, not all the tactics we can do now. Like <laughs> there's a lot that like my, my parents, parents, the, the, the things just won't work, right? Society, children's aid, it'll not be pretty. So I needed to not see the way that I was brought up as a definite, as the way it was, and really just adapt and uh, evolve to to be more progressive with the the next generation and whatever that means. Right. It was it was how best can I support my kids for what they're going to deal with, because it's way different than me. I didn't have the Internet. Right. When when I was a kid, it was just coming out. So all the things that they see and do now and tablets and all the things like, you know, if I don't evolve from what I grew up with and the way that I was raised, I'm not setting them up properly for the kinds of challenges that they're going to have. That's why we're all all different. And you're so spoiled, right? Like you said, waiting one day on Amazon. Because yeah, I heard about people who actually had to wait 30 seconds or something like that for the for the internet back then. But we are so spoiled now. If we wait a half a second, mm-hmm, the website is too slow. So it's just like, we, just, oh, we always want to get a result so fast. It's just like, would you have a stronger patience? That's right. Just keeping the patience all over my heart. Mm-hmm. We always have to get those good ones there. Oh, and people can hit you up. Over there. Oh, that's why we put it over in the chat. We can hit you up right here at the Sean Robinson dot cap. Yeah, that's uh I mean I've got all my my book stuff's there and uh all my videos are are there, any podcasts I've been on. There's a contact me section. So 
Uh, if anybody you know wants any advice or wants to tell me their story, absolutely reach out. You get directly to me through my website, and uh, you know any support that I can give. If there's uh, any feedback, then absolutely, I'm 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 here to serve. Hey, hey, <laughs> we all love learning new things and hearing. <laughs> That's cool to see a reality story right there and everything. So you get all that and uh, dropping a hundred pounds. <laughs> But also dropping all that, you know, desire for a grip of alcohol, but you can just do some on the cool one. But you know how to apparently balance, you probably do some more on your angles, but hey, we're all different. You have the cool one. Any actions you will get anybody to do? Anything you want us to motivate anybody to take an action? Do you the, the, the biggest things are, are just as we said, you know, uh, we got to be nice to ourselves. We got to celebrate when we when we have these wins, give ourselves some dopamine, you know, we, we lose, we lose one pound. Like, let's not think about the, the big milestone. Let's not think about, you know, cause a hundred is, is that mountain, right? Like I didn't know that going into it, but if I tried to do that right now, I mean, that, that, that's, that's what keeps us from doing anything, right. Is it, is that big mountain, whatever it is, we got to try and climb. So, you know, th the biggest thing is just, just give yourself, a smaller goal to start. Let's just do something. Let's just, let's just put our shoes on. Let's not worry about going for a walk. We just gotta, just gotta put our shoes on first and then we'll worry about walking later. Right. Taking the basic steps and then you'll see the other big, big the, the other next steps to take for it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the other doers. It's a good one. So, mm -hmm. Cause we always want to see the big, big things, but <laughs> let's just focus on the reality and mm -hmm. See what I'll actually happen when we just keep up the positive heart. Free your mind. The rest will follow. And then joyful, joyful. We just say joyful and great rewards come when we least expect it. Absolutely. Well, that's great. I hope you enjoying yourself. I look forward to hearing more of the testimonies you've got. And you saying just to go to your website. And we'll see what the testimonies. And yeah, we'll share all the details later. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.